to introduce Dr. Todd Ahern. He's an assistant professor in the Behavioral Neuroscience Program, and his presentation is entitled, Who Needs Sleep? I first wanted to start off, since I'm first, I just wanted to thank you for inviting us. I'm delighted to hear um, all the rest of the faculty, and so very exciting, great event. So my talk is, who needs sleep, right? Who needs it? So we look here and we're like, oh, why aren't we doing this instead, right? Or maybe we got cute babies here, oh, cute little baby sleeping. We even have puppies sleep, right? Oh, sleep is wonderful. But if you think about it, sleep is actually really strange, right? So sleepiness, you've all felt sleepiness, right? Well, it's basically driving you to a quiet, warm, comfortable place where you can lie down and remain unconscious for several hours. And that is just certified weird, you know? <laughs> because frankly, you know, this happens. <laughs> all right, I actually haven't seen Twilight here. <laughs> But you know, you raise this, all right, sleep is natural, it happens, but if you realize somebody were watching you, we'd get really, really weirded out, okay? So, in addition to being a great event, we can also see that there are consequences for not getting sleep, all right? And America has a great sleep debt. So if we go to the National Sleep Foundation and find out how many hours we should be getting, we should be in this range here. All right, seven to nine for you young adults, seven to nine for us adults. Whereas if we actually measure it over time, the NSF has done this study, we've been getting less and less sleep over time. In 2013, we were down to 6.5 hours on average. Not so good. And that was with about two thirds of individuals reporting that they weren't getting enough sleep. Okay, so we're not getting enough, but who cares, right? Exactly. So does too little sleep matter? Well, it turns out subjectively, yes. If you ask people, does sleep deprivation influence or affect the way you can perform? The answer is yes. 94% of people say that not getting enough sleep is going to have some impact or major impact on their functioning. Okay? You probably are all in that category too. We can also see that fatigue impairs performance. So we can put it next to a common substance such as alcohol here, and we can show that less than eight hours of sleep, so being awake more than 16 hours per day, our performance becomes dramatically impaired. Impaired to the same degree as if we consumed significant amounts of alcohol. Okay, That's something to keep in mind. Then we can see here, I'm a brain guy. My background's neuroscience. I love brains. And we can see here that these two pictures are not the same, right? What's different? Well, this side over here has a lot more activity than this side here, the sleep-deprived one. Your frontal lobes aren't working correctly. And we're going to find out later that that might actually be helpful in some circumstances, like creativity. But for most of us, for most activities, not a good thing, OK? So there's a the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex mainly regulates attention and so forth. Okay? It also has practical consequences. So we just went through the time change. Spring forward's awesome for all of you, I'm sure, right? But fall back, not so good, right? We lose time. And so you can see here that during the time change, when we lose sleep, if we can't make up for it the next morning, we actually end up having more car accidents. Whereas when we fall back, we actually decrease the number of car accidents. Kind of interesting, all right? And if we look even further, we see that sleep deprivation is tied to a host of physiological and psychological consequences, all right? So this is a little bit busy here, but you can see that cognitively we're impaired, all right? Memory issues, symptoms like ADHD, hallucinations for extreme sleep deprivation but also physical things like impaired immune system, risk of type 2 diabetes, obesity, which is on the rise. Some have proposed that that association is due to that decreasing level of sleep that Americans are getting. Okay. And so what can we do? Well, we can get sleep. But for those of you that are tech savvy, 
Uh, there was a study in 2013 that really pointed out that these passive technologies, they might not be uh, that bad, so TV, so forth, but doing active technologies like laptops and cell phones and video games prior to going to bed, not so good. So even if you're getting sleep, it's not going to be as refreshing. I'm looking at you, Val. <laughs> so here's my proposal. America should run on sleep, not on Duncan. All right? So I'm going to end it there with saying, get some sleep. I know it's hard. Your professors are mean. We make you do lots of work. But get as much sleep as you can. And so, God sleep. <laughs>